a Yanko street racer to save you money. There are some legendary names in the collector and muscle car world, and Yanko is definitely one of them. Don Yanko owned the Chevrolet dealership in Cannonsburg, Pennsylvania, and he was able to exert his personal influence inside General Motors to get Chevrolet to build cars that maybe they never intended to. The most famous examples are the 427 powered Camaros, but the Yanko treatment was applied to other Chevrolet names, and today, we're spending time with a very rare 1970 Yanko Deuce Nova. There are lots of things to consider when looking at this car. The Nova was an economy car sold by Chevrolet, and the vast majority were powered by six-cylinder engines. Novas have a fairly rigid unibody design with two-door versions having a pillar post window configuration for additional stiffness. The goal was to build a lightweight, inexpensive economy car to attract entry-level Chevrolet buyers. But here's where the story gets interesting. By 1970, insurance companies were charging lofty premiums to insure big engine muscle cars which was scaring off potential buyers at Chevrolet dealerships. So, Yanko was seeking an opportunity to sell a high-performance car that could kind of slip under the radar of the insurance companies. After all, a Nova was an economy car. But a Nova was also a great platform for a high-performance car. In addition to the rigid unibody, Novas shared suspension components with Camaros so high-performance brakes and suspension parts were already available from Chevrolet. And you could already buy a factory-installed small-block V8 in an OVA, so it wouldn't take much engineering to hop one up. And that is exactly what Don Yanko did. The story behind the Yanko Deuce is that by 1970, muscle cars were being penalized with exorbitantly high insurance premiums. So when an insurance company would see a car with wild stripes and a big block V8 under the hood, they jacked up the insurance premiums, which scared people away from buying these cars. The recipe was simple. Take high performance Corvette and Camaro parts and swap them into the Nova, add a few extras, stripe it up, and you've got yourself a hot rod. The biggest part of the Yanko Deuce is the 360 horsepower LT1 V8 engine, which was normally found in Corvettes and Camaro SS models. From the top down, the Yanko Deuce LT1 350 featured a 780 CFM Holley carburetor sitting on top of a high-rise aluminum intake manifold. A performance curved dual point distributor helped with high RPM spark. It had free breathing cylinder heads and a high performance solid lifter camshaft. The bottom half of the engine featured 11 to 1 compression pistons and special connecting rods identified on the assembly line by a dab of pink paint. The forged crankshaft was held in place by four bolt main caps rather than the two bolts found on regular passenger car engines. And that engine is known as the Copo 9010 package when ordered through Chevrolet's central office. But a Yanko Deuce is far more than just a high-performance engine. The car also came with Copo Package 9737, which was known as the Sports Car Conversion Package. This was similar to what you could get on a Yanko or Copo Camaro, 
and it offered suspension and driveline upgrades to match the high performance engine. It started with an oversized front sway bar and added a rear sway bar, tuned springs and shocks, and oversized E70 14 inch tires. It also added the Muncie M21 close ratio four speed manual transmission and a high performance 12 bolt rear end loaded with 410 rear gears and a positive traction differential. And if that wasn't enough, the Yanko Deuce package added additional performance items like power front disc brakes, a Hurst shifter, and dual exhaust. Yanko also added SS wheels with Yanko badge center caps, a hood tachometer, an AM radio, and special Yanko striping and badges to add some visual appeal to the otherwise basic Nova design. There's no doubt that the Yanko Deuce is a very cool car in general, and this specific one is one of the best examples left in existence. One of the neatest things about this particular car is that its history is very well known. In fact, the original owners took this car racing right after they bought it. They added some chrome wheels and different exhaust, air intake, uh, carburetor manifold stuff, and they went drag racing with it and those what they call day two performance parts have been restored and they stayed with the car throughout the years. In fact, they were installed on the car and it was displayed at the Muscle Car and Corvette Nationals and it caused quite a stir because some people thought it was really neat to see the old speed equipment on the car, whereas other people say, make it look like it did the day it was born. Its outstanding current condition is thanks to a recent restoration, but it has all of its original numbers matching driveline and body sheet metal, and it's only showing just over 18,000 miles on the odometer. There were 175 Yanko deuces produced. 75 are believed to exist today, with 17 of those painted in fathom blue, like this one. So how would you display your Yanko deuce Nova? as it was born from the factory or with speed parts on it. You can share your thoughts with us on our Facebook page. And we'd like to thank you for watching and thank the Brothers Collection for allowing us to produce 150 episodes of Muscle Car of the Week. But don't worry, we're not done yet. We've got more cars coming, so be sure you subscribe to the YouTube channel so you don't miss the next maybe 150 episodes of Muscle Car of the Week.